Oh, there we go. <laughs> Lost sight of things for a second there. Hello, hello, and welcome to CoffeeCraft. I am your slightly out of it host, Anon Jr. <laughs> Uh, if you saw on Twitter, I canceled last Thursday's stream because I've been fighting a sinus infection. Uh, this one's probably going to be a little short because I'm still fighting a sinus infection. Uh, if you remember last week, I was... To, oh, I really got to turn off those clouds. Um, <laughs> uh, if you remember from last week, uh, I mentioned that I, would, I was just taking some Sudafed because I was feeling so hot. I thought it was just a head cold. No, it's a full-on massive sinus infection and just feels oh so lovely. So, I've been homesick a lot in the last few days. I called out of work Thursday and Friday, and when I wasn't uh, racked out, uh, I did get a little bit of stuff done on the server. So today is mostly going to be uh, a quick trip around the server, taking a look at what's there and... The eagle died among you will probably notice that next to the back gate, I've got a little extra door. Um, I'll get to where that goes in just a minute. But first, I want to show you what was in the background of that opening shot. This is the completed rail station over behind my base. I got tired of taking the rail back to my base and getting capped by skeletons and nearly blown up by creepers and uh, assaulted by wandering patrols that, uh, that were all over here, just, you know, waiting for me to come home. Some unwelcome guests that had some things to say. It went through a couple of different iterations. I was originally going to try to build this out of brick to fit with the castle, and it just it wasn't working. I wasn't feeling it. So I took the same basic design as what Reyest used in um, the main hub down in the community center um, with the prismarine and the way the pillars are set up. I did do the roof a little differently because this is high enough in the mountains that if I were to try an aquarium, we'd end up with an ice block with fish. And yes, I did deeply, deeply consider making an aquarium that was an ice block with some armor stand fish stuck in it. Um, I may still do that. I'm deeply considering doing that. You know, just embedding some coral and, <laughs> and stuff like that in ice blocks. <laughs> um, because I, I'm still not 100% happy with the roof. I wanted enough light to keep snow from forming on there because it is my never-ending quest against the snow in the mountains. Uh, the quest that I am losing, and I, I didn't like it, but I was willing to let it sit for a little while, and then Reyes took a look at it, and I got a funny feeling if I don't fix it, she's going to fix it for me, and, and I, I'd rather, I'd rather, I'd rather fix it myself. Um, but anyway, we so we get a nice little, uh, we get a nice little station. I got, I got a, I missed a map, uh, so I got one more map, but uh, yeah, so here we are. Wrong button. We're back here behind the castle, and we got a couple other things to go through on this way too. So let me go ahead and grab a cart. Let me head on over to the hub. You'll also notice I started terraforming over there, and I forgot what I wanted to show you before I left. Oh well, I'm already down the cart. Uh, I blame that on the exhaustion. And I've started doing a little terraforming over there. We'll go over that more on the way back because uh, one of the big things, so big it was in the title of the episode uh, or title of the stream, is we got a lot of work done on the villager trading hall. And I want to kind of show that off a little bit. Let's run through here and <laughs> yeah, we, we got cakes scattered all over the place. Oh. I gotta replace those iron trapdoors, or the iron pressure plate. Goodness gracious. Uh, the iron pressure plates with, uh, <laughs> with wooden ones, so that way the, uh, the redstone, the door stays open a little bit longer. We got this fun rail coming back from my base that way into the villager trading hall, because one of the things we did is we finished that first floor. 
and we moved some of the villagers in. We got a fair number of the guys that were chilling in the basement in here. We had a couple of empty spaces that we filled with some new folk. The, uh, the villagers that were, if you guys remember, a while back in one of the, I think it was 14 point, or 1.14.2-ish, somewhere in that ballpark, we did an upgrade and there was a bug with the villagers where they'd keep breeding even though there, were, there wasn't enough beds and they weren't supposed to be. And so I ended up with uh, two vegetable farms chock full of villagers. Yeah, some of, some of them uh, made the long winding trip down that rail over here to, uh, to be newly employed. By the by, the iron farm is doing quite nicely. And that's with Arcadius and I pillaging the iron supplies to, uh, to get some of these guys unlocked into their full p potential. Um, I might explain that one a little bit later, but I'm just going to pause for a moment. Okay, um, so this is one of the clerics that we had down below. So he is one of the old style clerics. These are the only trades he's going to get. Eventually, we may fill him with a new, with one of the new guys, just because the rates tend to be a little bit better. But on the other hand, he does good and he does what we need. Um, this guy is one of the new ones that we piped in from uh, over yonder, and. Uh, he, we got him fully unlocked because we have an abundance of rotten flesh from the uh, monster droppers. And that's been a really good source of emeralds, which uh, I won't speak for everybody, but I normally turn right back around to replenish my redstone supplies after a project or uh, my glowstone supplies, which are running perilously low. I kind of like this guy will trade for empty glass bottles, which is nice given uh, what's come out of a, my uh, monster dropper and uh, nether wart so I might just finish up my massive nether wart farm at some point in the very near future and of course we got our other guy he was one of the first if I remember right this was one of the first villagers that we started this trading hall with way back um, it might have been I think it was before we even started streaming the the first edition of this villager hall when it was Cortezarino's design uh, built for 1.13. Yeah, he was he was one of the two people that uh, Arcadius brought in from um, a village over yonder that we're uh, way over yonder that we're uh, we're thinking of rehabbing and replenishing and protecting so that way it's still there when we go back to visit again. And, and so yeah, he's one of the first two people that founded this whole trading hall. Um, one of the other guys is tragically missing. I don't remember if I mentioned this on the last stream or not, but when we got the structure built and the new collection system for the iron golems going, I went to go turn the farm back on. So, you know, when I was... Oop, come on, keep flying. So what I had done to turn it off while I was working on the building was I'd put an iron block obstructing their view of the zombie and their view of the zombie. And uh, so that way they wouldn't get scared and they wouldn't produce iron golems and I could actually work down there without having golem after golem falling on top of me. Um, I came back up to check on them and both of these pods were gone. Empty. So I, I had to run six villagers from... Uh, that surplus that we also filled in down there to replenish these guys. And I mention that only because one of the other two villagers that we had originally stocked up the the, the first ver edition of the trading hall and villager breeder down there was one of the guys that was up here. So uh, poor old Mr. Cleric is the last remaining soul from the first expedition out of that village. But we got a new village... Uh, villager a new golem collection system going over here that is now a three by three hole so we shouldn't have problems with them uh, keeping things as uh, plugged as they were before uh, this is not the most efficient water flow design this is not the best water flow design it's the one that I could fit in as soon as I realized that I had mismeasured a couple of things and yeah but it works and that's the important part right but that's been working pretty good. Let's get back to our guys down below. 
server's been a little funny and I just now remembered that I was supposed to reboot it before I started streaming. Just because <laughs> there's been some weirdness going on. Alright, anyway. So we got our three clerics all ready to go. We've got a couple of new armor smiths that we leveled up. Um, projectile protection is not that bad. Price is a little high. We could do the whole zombification cure, zombification cure thing. But uh, honestly, the the infrastructure to make that happen was a little bit more than uh, than I'm willing to do at this particular juncture. We might save that for the trading hall in season one, which we hope to start in January ish with our brand new fourth member. Uh, so we got our other guy over here. He's got some unbreaking armor, which is always nice, especially with the protection to unbreaking two boots and. Honestly, here's the other thing. Emeralds aren't as hard to come by right now because we got a lot of yahoos that will trade iron for emeralds. And yeah, we've already got 11 iron in the time it took me to open the chest, fly up to the top, talk about the missing villagers, and fly back down. Um, I, I don't think we need to really worry about them being expensive when we, we can get our hands on some emeralds pretty quick if we need to. Um, okay. So we got that guy, we got that guy, and we got a third armor smith, also fully unlocked. And he's got some protection too, and breaking one type stuff. Uh, the feather falling too is my personal favorite, given how many times I fall. I, I do like that feather falling. We've got a couple of Fletchers in here. So we got little John over here, who is fully unlocked with some errors of regeneration. And uh, I kind of like that we got an easy access to bows because with as many dispensers as we end up making for some of these machines, it's kind of nice to just go, dude, here's two armor, give me a bow. <laughs> and do that for as many, as many bows as we need. That's part of why we've actually got a decent stockpile of bows. We were unlocking these guys and it's like, I, I don't, I, I don't want to trade for Flint. We have more arrows than we know what to do with. Oh, you'll take emeralds for bows. Yes, please. I'll, I'll take all the ones you're willing to sell. And I also like that he'll buy the feathers because that gives me a use for all the feathers that my uh, little chicken farm is overproducing. And, you know, the, the cooked chicken farm that I almost never go to and kind of forget that I set up. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I also like this guy, I'll take the sticks because we got that bamboo farm going so if we need emeralds we can convert a lot of bamboo into a lot of sticks and make that happen too. And uh, piercing's not bad. I kind of hate that it's piercing one and I really wish that we had that this guy had one of the enchanted arrows like homeboy next to him. So uh, once we get a working villager breeder going, uh, Robin might be replaced with Robin the second or third, or fourth, or, you know, however many Robins it takes. Um, oh, I said that in front of you, didn't I? I'm sorry. You heard nothing. Uh, <laughs> we get a couple of weaponsmiths that aren't bad, and I do like that a lot of our armor and weaponsmiths all have bells available, because we were kind of trying to figure out what we were going to do about that, and just about every one of them has a bell. Which is weird because this isn't this isn't supposed to pop up all the time, and a lot of these guys have them, and that is awesome. Uh, and <laughs> this dude is probably going to stay around just for that axe for having fortune one, unbreaking three, efficiency three, right out the gate. Yes, please, because uh, I I do like my efficiency. Um, I do have a fortune version of my everyday silk touch. Um, that knockback can go die in a fire somewhere. It'll probably get disenchanted for a base uh, diamond sword, so I'm not wasting diamonds building swords. Um, and uh, Ryan here <laughs> is also unlocked. He's got a fortune one axe, like, eh, okay. And that sweeping edge is, eh, it's okay. I mean, I use sweeping edge. I kind of hate that it's sweeping edge one, but it's cheap enough to stack up. And again, uh, 16 diamond for a diamond sword that you can disenchant with a grindstone and uh, put whatever you want on it. That's still not that bad. Let me get this guy over here with his unbreaking axe, which is always nice. Sharpness three, always nice. 
And again, all three of those weaponsmiths have bells. All three of them will buy iron with emeralds. So if nothing else, if we didn't like anything else these guys had to offer between the iron farm and these three yahoos right here, we can get our hands on a lot of emeralds. Which means it, even if some of the other stuff is, is expensive. Uh, instead of trying to do all the, um, all the shenanigans to get their prices down, Use the iron farm and these three and we have enough emeralds and life is good uh, got a couple of toolsmiths back here these are all guys from the original farm they um, they might be replaced with they might be sent out to a, a, a fun retirement in a warm climate <clears throat> yeah yeah we'll call it that it, it's a retirement in a warm climate um, yeah, a warm climate. And uh, <laughs> just in case you didn't see us in the, in the act of building it last week. Uh, but for now, again, iron for emeralds, they do it for days. And seriously, an efficiency 2 on breaking 2 pick for 12 emeralds isn't that bad. You can combine that a couple of times and get a really nice base pick to start building from there. Uh, Bob from Boston. There, there's a joke in there somewhere, and he is up on the new the new system, as you can tell by the bell that he too has, um, and an efficiency axe and a fortune one. Eh, fortune one's a little, eh. but it's there, and we're probably going to keep him around because he was a uh, a good guy to work with for a few a few different things. And yeah, this dude, he's been around from the beginning, and again, efficiency 2 and breaking 2, that's why we kept him. He was one of the duplicates that was going to um, meet with an early retirement at some point, but we had no good way of organizing the villagers in the last version of this. And that is one of the things that I do like about the way we did this thing, this go-around. Although, all that wool, that we're going to have to replace with some glass or something because they're supposed to, when they're traveling in the minecart, they're supposed to be just below that string that's in front of those observers. So they're not supposed to be triggering that as they go through. It's only when they pop out of the cart that they're supposed to be triggering that. But for whatever reason, and I just realized there's a bit of glass missing there and that's gonna bother me. Um, sorry, ADD moment. There we go. Okay. That's fixed. That's better. Okay. Um, so every time these yahoos were coming around the U to the next empty hole, they were getting punched with the <laughs> punched with the wool in the face. And some of these guys, uh, a couple of the villagers didn't didn't quite make it. That's why uh, Arcadius put this together, some splash potions of regen to, uh, to hit them with. And we, we started moving them. Once we got to the back third here, we started piping them in from the other side so that way they wouldn't take as much going all the way around. But, um, yeah. Next opportunity, that wool's going to be replaced with glass so that way they don't take suffocation damage. I think that'll fix the problem. Or I might find a different uh, transparent block to use too. Just something that will push them in without hurting them. And we got a couple of stone masons in here. These guys will be very useful simply because we have more stone than we know what to do with. Um, I am trying to balance that with making sure we got enough stone on hand for some of our larger scale projects. I am a little concerned that uh, we'll go, oh, we got plenty of stone. We got plenty of stone. And trade it all for emeralds. And then we go to do a big project that requires a lot of stone and find our stores are depleted. Um, so that is something to keep an eye on just to make sure that we're not, we keep a decent supply. And I love that these guys sell bricks. Uh, I'm tired of hunting in swamps for clay. I'm so tired of hunting in swamps for clay. Um, and the other trades are nice too, like especially the uh, quartz blocks and quartz pillars. Because uh, I don't know if you noticed, but there's a fair amount of quartz in the rail station builds. And these guys are a whole lot better than hunting down the nether. Um, we got a fisherman here, Arcadius's spirit animal, 
because in every game, if there is fishing, Arcadius is fishing. Now this guy we're going to have to finish unlocking to see if he's uh, worth keeping around. So he's one of the two or three floating around here that we have not finished unlocking. Uh, probably going to go spend some time down by the spider farm to get enough string to just unlock him or at least to get him further that we can take our buckets and buckets of cod from the uh, from the uh, guardian farm and finish him out. We got a little shepherd. He is actually from... I think he's from... No, he's not from the old one. He is one that we leveled up. Um, and, of course, our farmers. We got mostly guys from the old school and really all they're there for is to trade crops for emeralds. Because I got that melon pumpkin farm and eh, that ain't bad. And of course we got the one new guy so that way we at least have a source of golden carrots and glistering melons which is always nice. I kind of wish he had a pumpkin trade on him too because four melons for an emerald is a lot better than these guys. Eight for an emerald and uh... <laughs> Ten for an emerald. Yikes. And you probably also noticed behind me the bubble vaders and the hidden redstone. I did try to at least, you know, hide it a little bit. If I had realized it was gonna stick this far back though, I think I would have pushed that uh back wall back a little bit further. Which would have done two things. It would have given us a little more room for a couple more stalls on the sides and it would have given us a little bit more of a walkway in between here but by the time I realized just how tight that that end hallway was going to be uh, nah we, we'll live we'll be okay and this has a um not smooth polished polished stone floor with some andersite and diorite and granite and I want to do something like this on the next floor down I just we needed to get more of those guys out of the bottom but this floor is done and ready except for replacing the wool with uh, glass or some other transparent block that we hope will not uh, do damage to them and then we're gonna fill out this top hall here um, and the question that we're trying to figure out now is who are we going to put down here? One of the problems we were running into when we we're filling in the bottom part was some of these guys were grabbing another workstation because they thought they could pathfind over to those other workstations. Uh, looking around a few different videos, I noticed that Cortez Reno and a couple other people ended up putting a, they'd tear up a block here and they'd put a wool and then a wool on top of that and for some reason they would treat that double wool block gap as not traversable. So I might do that around the outer edge of this level and then like maybe throw a workstation down over here and get that first guy in that stall and see if he takes the workstation in the middle and just try to find some ways to uh, to get these guys to not pick somebody else's station because that, uh, that was getting a little frustrating as we were putting everything together. So there is our trading hall. All set and done. Well, almost all set and done. Last thing we still gotta do is down here... Oh, somebody tore the door down. Um, we'll do it this way. That's where we're railing them up out of here. We still have all the librarians that we had before just kind of, you know, poking around here in the perpetual wave machine. Doing the wave. And what we're probably going to do is take this bottom floor here, expand it out to the same dimensions as the top two floors, and get a third floor and put all our librarians in the basement. Uh, decorate this one a little bit differently. But... Uh, Build a, uh, build a giant basement of librarians down here. So that is still on the agenda for uh, our trading hall project, but it is nice to finally have some forward momentum because this was kind of stalled out for a little too long. And now we can at least get some trades going and get some emeralds coming in and, uh, and doing that kind of stuff. It is awfully nice. Ooh, and I don't know if you noticed, 
because I can't remember if I had this working right on the last stream or not. But I've got behind here a little filter set up. So that way all the iron gets pumped down into here and all the poppings get filtered out into that composter. And as you just heard, it is producing some bone meal. So that should uh, give us a ready supply, or com a ready community supply of bone meal. And uh, help with that a little bit too. So there that is. Arcadius is working on a little project over there. And I was told while I was down in this area, I should check. I really think this is probably because, uh, does he still have it in there? Yeah. I, I keep giving him a hard time about his clocks. So. <laughs> I guess that's fair. And Rayest found out that she could start breeding the trader llamas and that they would pack and follow each other so long as you had at least one of them on a lead. So now she has begun her quest to get three of each Mario death music. <sighs> she is on her quest to get three of each color so she can have a full pack of Trader Llamas. <laughs> it's glorious. And that thing has proven itself already by cooking up a bunch of netherrack. All right, now, yeah, you see our temporary rail to move some villagers over. <laughs> it did the job though, that's all that matters. As soon as we get them down, we're gonna tear that down and eventually uh, put together something a little more permanent um, over in my hill over here since it's far enough away from everything else. Uh, over in this facade of Masad. Masad? I think it was myself. Um, back behind here, I am going to build a villager breeder. Uh, I'm still on the hunt for the right design. Because most of the designs that I've found just perpetually pop out villagers. And that's nice and all. But um, one of the things that we noticed with the last villager breeder that we had, which worked that way was once we once we filled up whatever project it was that we were working on that's all we needed so i'm looking for villager breeder designs that you you can easily turn on and off uh so they'll produce villagers until you need them to stop um the way the the earlier version of our villager breeder stopped <laughs> Uh, producing villagers was by giving the uh, new villagers a short trip in a hot bath, if you catch my drift. <laughs> and I mean, we could do that too, but uh, yeah, I'd rather, I'd rather, I'd rather find a better way. Just saying. Uh, so that'll go in there as soon as I get that squared away, and I'll tidy up the terrain around it too, so it fits in a little bit better. Which almost by coincidence brings me back to what I was walking around the other side for. Because I worked on the villager trading hall a little bit, I worked on the, uh, the rail station a little bit, and then, yeah, that was between naps and whatnot. Because <laughs> again, this sinus infection has really knocked me out the last, last few days. Um, and one of the other things I worked on is over this way. Probably ought to give Rayest the uh, whichever color it was that she's missing. I think I've got a couple of them floating around here somewhere. No, those aren't the trader llamas. Those are the regular llamas. These are the trader llamas. And yeah, there's a brown one in there. I think that was all she needed was just one more brown one. Alright. Oh, oh. Ow. Oh. 
over here, if you remember, one of the things that we, we had was this uh, incline for the rail system was a little too close to the, the terrain for just to prop up struts and make it look like that, and it was too far to look like it naturally fit. So I've been working on tying it into the terrain. Now if you're looking at that and it doesn't look like, uh, if you can't see what I've done, <laughs> then I've done it right because it looks like naturally generated terrain. That was the goal. And uh, I just need to finish up this other side, which I've started, and it's mostly there. And I think that's going to be what I work on as soon as I'm done going through all the different changes. Um, I also got to do something about this corner here because the pillager patrols like to spawn over in this area here for some reason. And so when you're traveling down the rail line, oh, sorry, this side, traveling down the rail line and you're heading over to the station, they, they see you over the glass because they're just high enough that they can see you over the glass. And sometimes, at least once, it might have happened that one of them actually jumped the glass and chased me all the way down the rail into the station. <laughs> It made for a very interesting day. So uh, I'll have to figure out what I can do about that. But I'm going to finish tying that into the hillside next to it so it looks like this thing's been sitting on on the terrain all along. And it'll all just kind of flow into the hill that's already there. And I started working on filling in some of the hill over here. So it started fitting in with the terrain a little bit. I've been playing with these slabs and stairs and walls of andersite and uh, stone. So it gives it a rougher texture. But still looks kind of natural. So I really got to fix a couple of these. They, they look like good ideas until I left them for a little while. And yeah, that's... No, no, that's going to have to go. Sad. And, eh. We'll see how well that one stays, too. But, uh, hidden under here, and part of the reason why I started working on it the way I did is, uh, pillar, pillager patrols like to also spawn over here. You know, just outside the station. Just outside my door. And, uh, the whole reason why I built the station while I was home was because I was getting tired of getting attacked every time I rolled into the station and not having carts as pillagers would walk on top of the pressure plate, start a cart down the rail, and, uh, yeah, so there'd be nothing left. And rather than meet the welcoming committee outside that wall there, I built a small little tunnel that goes from the rail station into the castle. So that's what this guy is right here. Just a quick little tunnel, so this is the same water elevator that Arcadius has in his little underground bit. I kind of like the way that was set up, so I blatantly stole that idea. <laughs> and, yeah, just put a little cap on it. If I had thought about it a little bit more, I would have pushed this about two blocks back. Absolutely, thief. Um... Yeah, I would have pushed this back at least two blocks, so that back wall was flush with the actual brick wall, and this wouldn't have protruded quite so far out from there. But uh, once I got the water in, I really didn't feel like getting rid of that and starting over again. I might go fix it another day when I'm feeling kind of bored and not looking for anything, or not having anything else of uh, substance to do. But that's what's been going on. And so I think with the rest of the time, I'm going to try to get a little bit more of the train work done over there. Um, oh yeah, I got a little lip going around here. This is about as far out from the wall as I'm going to get before I start uh, training my way down a little bit and getting this stuff taken care of too. So I can start tying this into the wall and that into the, the hillside there. I do need to make sure that I mark off the uh, 
the glass window, which is somewhere around here. Um, oh, there it is. I need to make sure that I keep that column open, because that is where my AFK fish farm is that I haven't used since uh, way early in the season. But still, it'd be nice to have that available if I ever wanted to use it again. And I'm going to wrap this around a little bit more and figure out... I have no idea what I'm going to do for this spot right above where the house is. Um, but fortunately, i got enough work to do before I have to worry about that. So with that, let me grab a sip of my tea. flat spot in there because that seemed that seemed worth it that, that, that fits in all right that's not bad I can live with that I can work with that all right let me go grab some uh, grab some stone and we'll start working on the last little bit of hill on the other side of that rail and that's probably all I'm gonna work on today because again I am wiped I'm tired. My body hurts. And I still have to work tomorrow. Grab some grass. Grab some stone. And away we go. Now, at this particular juncture, I'm not going to go messing with slabs and stairs and fancy ruffling of the terrain yet. I want to, what I want to do is I want to get the basic terrain around the castle to look naturally generated, to get the mountain shaped in the general shape that I want, and then, then I will go through and do like I'm doing near the door in a circle around from that lip at the base of the castle down to about this level all the way around the castle so it's like a the stony peak on top of the mountain that the castle is built upon and then start worrying and then start building in uh grassy grassy terrain and maybe do uh some thin vegetation that gets a little bit thicker as you get down and gradiated out that way um that is the long-term plan for that particular chunk of land and eventually, I will go through and re-terrain it so that way you don't have this beautifully terrained lake and waterfall and then, you know, the, the regular generated stuff. <laughs> uh, but I do want it to fit just a little bit better. That is, uh, that is part of the long-term plan, and again, it depends on how much gets done with that. I do, I do need to start getting some produced episodes, something a little bit shorter, uh, a little more tightly focused and tightly edited. Tightly focused, I am capable of, believe it or not. You, you wouldn't be able to tell from the live streams, but I, I can do that. It is in my skill set. Sort of, mostly, kinda. And, uh, yeah. That, uh, that, that's one of the last little bits that I really want to make sure that I get done and working before we call Season Zero a success. We put a time frame of January because we didn't want to have the perpetual Season Zero where we're almost ready. And knowing me, I do much better with uh, when I've got actual time limits. Like, hey, you have until this time. And then you really need to be about as ready as you're going to be. So right now we're looking at January for the start of season one. I'm hoping that 1.15 will be out in January because what I'd really love to do is start the new world with 1.15. I think if 1.15 is out before January, I'm going to talk to the other Coffee Craft members because we do... Uh, this is not this is not a dictatorship. It's not Anon's server, and everybody else just lives on it. Um, we we do vote on these sorts of things, but I'm thinking I'm going to recommend that if 1.15 comes out before we start season one, we hold off on the upgrade 
and start season one on 1.15 if we can. Now, that does depend on 1.15 being out, but um, one of the problems that I noticed with just continually upgrading with some of the major versions is you're missing out on some of the new features. Like, we haven't done anything with foxes this season because we, we haven't hit any of the, the terrain that they, they spawn in, um, or we haven't hit any new terrain that they would have normally spawned in. Now we could go hunting them down, but um, that's a that's a lot of work for a berry farm. And right now, none of the villagers trade for berries, um, so I'm not I'm not as much as I want to do a berry farm just to do a berry farm because I like building farms. I love building machines and things like that. In case you haven't noticed, and uh, I will probably build one just for the sake of building one. But uh, I'm not doing all that work for a couple of foxes. I don't care how foxy those foxes are. Alright, bad joke. And with the uh, with the bees that are supposed to be out in 1.15, I really would like to uh, make sure that we can add those into whatever we're doing. I don't think they've finalized exactly what the honey in the honeycomb is going to do and that sort of thing. Minecon is coming up, and that's usually when they uh, really start building out that sort of information. So I'm sure in the coming weeks we'll start getting more about that. Yeah, it's just a matter of having a little bit of patience. Which is sometimes my strong suit. Sometimes. But uh, it would be nice to do the because if if I'm understanding correctly, if we had started this this world in with the current seed, starting in the current spawn point and all that stuff as normal, we probably should have had some sweetberry bushes in around here somewhere, and maybe foxes. Although this is a mountain biome, so maybe not maybe not the foxes. I think they're only in the the tree, the tree biomes and that sort of thing. Uh, the plains, not the plains. Um, the thing that escapes me. I'll blame it on the pseudophod. Yeah, that works. I'll blame it on the pseudophod. <laughs> I'm also excited to start adding in some new members because you got to remember, uh, well, you might not remember because of, <laughs> I didn't find out until afterwards that the uh, live stream we did touring all the old worlds, I had the wrong mic input selected. So you only heard my side of the conversation, which is sad because the rest of these guys were fun and funny and hilarious and wonderful. But, um, Arcadius, Rayest, and I have been playing together for quite some time off and on since version 1.8 or so. 1.7, 1.8, somewhere around there. And it had always been a random world that somebody set up on their computer. And it's just whoever got home from work first started it up, started up a world. And so we bounced around a lot of different worlds doing a lot of different things. And it wasn't until... Um, 1.8, 1.9, um, that we finally got a server going. I, I took the media center server that was in the house that was running the TV, DVR, that sort of thing, and uh, gave it a new additional duty of hosting Minecraft. It was my first foray into running a Minecraft server. That was interesting. Um, it eventually got moved to an old laptop running uh, Ubuntu, which was a mistake because Java on Linux is, yeah, that's no fun. Sometimes. Many times. That time in particular. It didn't help that that was not the beefiest of laptops. I mean, it, it, it was an old one that we had laying around that wasn't really doing much 
of anything for anyone, so uh, it made the perfect candidate. In theory. On paper. In practice, not so much. Then we started this on a different version of the Media Center, 1.13. But we had one other server in the middle there, and uh, probably at the end of Season Zero, uh, I'll get everybody together and we might do one more run through the uh, server's past. Another visit of the Ghost of Server's Past before we get to <laughs> server's present and future. And uh, get one last look at how things have changed, especially since we'll... we'll we should be ready to wrap up around January because we, we know that deadline's coming and uh, it's easier to manage that sort of thing when you know what's about to happen. All right. Um, mostly fits. But I'm not sure that I like the, the concave feel that it's got going. I know why it does. I'm not sure that I like it, though. That does look like it. That does look like it about fits. Alright, uh, let me throw a layer of grass on top of it and then let's see how it looks from there. Because that is the other thing I wanted to do, is I wanted to get the mountain to be rock only or mainly near the pinnacle. Stay on the mountain. But yeah, at the end of uh, Season Zero, I definitely plan on doing a world tour, a final look, so to speak. Lost in focus. That, uh, strength and a weakness at times. The gentleman that will be joining in season one is a friend of the family that we've known for some time. We've played D&D with them a lot. Um, in particular, more so recently than ever before. And yeah, it's going to be fun. I, don't, I didn't speak with anybody beforehand, so I don't know if we're gonna announce it now or wait till later. And rather than make a decision and then find out it was wrong, I'm going to uh, wait before releasing names. Good friend. I am excited to, uh, I'm excited for this. It will definitely give us a chance to start learning to work with, uh, more than just the, uh, <laughs> the people in the immediate household and deal with things when, uh, you can't necessarily lay hands on the person who did them. Literally, uh, lay hands on the person who did them. And we've definitely learned a few things doing our season zero we uh we thought we had given ourselves enough space we, we're gonna spread out a little bit more um definitely need to get a little more room <laughs> okay i got enough
We definitely like the commons area. We are almost certainly not, at least in season one, we're not going to do the diamond economy thing where we trade goods and services for diamonds. We are going to continue the community center and community projects. So there'll be a space set aside that anything built in that space is fair game for whomever and a little bit of community storage such that uh, if it's in community storage well then uh, if you need it grab it obviously within limits please don't pillage all the supplies of a particular thing <laughs> you know uh, sensible limits yeah i'll worry about the backside later Might start getting that to blend back into stone as it goes back up. All right, let me get rid of the stone. I thought it was going to need a lot more of that. Grab some more dirt and grass. Take a look at uh, at what's going on. And I might call that done, or at least done for the moment. Uh, I just want to make sure that it blends in fairly well. or dirt doesn't really matter to me because the uh, the dirt will end up grass blocks sooner or later all right let's fly out Ooh. that's not bad I really didn't want those stone patches in there although I might leave them Try to get that last little bit up there and then let it go stone back up. Yeah. Yeah, that's coming along nicely. Not that hard. Soft. I am a leaf upon the wind. Look how they flutter. Probably going to finish the same way too. trying to stay a little bit lower was so I could go there and fill that in. That and there one more there, one more there. That to roll just a little bit more. That was a little too flat. That's better. Just a little bit of sleep. What are you talking about? You can only sleep at night. That looks an awful lot like. Uh, well, okay. As the sun slowly sets on the Coffee Craft Empire. Showed a mug with a stormtrooper on it. Don't sue me, Disney.
Just like that. I don't know. You tell me. If you're watching this later on YouTube, let me know in the comments. Does that look like naturally generated Minecraft terrain? Did I achieve my objective? Making it look... I hear you, zombie. There we go. Fix that X. I do need to have looting for next time. Oh, I really do need to repair those now, too. Dupeberry bush. Alright, where was I? You tell me, especially if you're watching later when I upload this uh, stream archive to YouTube. Does that, uh, did I reach my objective? Does that look like it's part of the naturally generated terrain? You know, as opposed to that. Gorgeous, but uh, clearly man made lake. <laughs> yeah, I do want to do more landscaping projects like that, though. That, that is that is definitely on the list. But uh, all right, so landscaping by the track is done. Next is going to be to fill in and reshape the landscape on this side of the mountain. That stone ledge up there is as high as the land's going to go. So I'm going to have to bring it down steep on this side of the cave, round out that cave, uh, so it looks a little more a little more natural-ish. Um, I might throw in some more black wool to, uh, to make it look dark and foreboding, or maybe some layers of glass with air gaps to, to give it that fog effect as it goes back. And... Um, same on this side. I'm going to have to bring it down a little bit steep because I don't want it to come too much further out from where it's at. Uh, maybe up to those shrubs there. And I'm going to make sure I keep that column over that glass block clear. And i got to figure out what I'm going to do about the mountainside over the house. I might actually make it steep and actually come down over where the roof is and maybe put like a um, stone brick uh, supported shelf or something where the windows are. Kind of like that idea. I'll have to play with that a little bit. Uh, but that, that'll be the latter part. Um, this will be the next terraforming when I have the... Uh, time and energy. Right now I have the time, but sadly I lack the energy. And I gotta change out that roof. Yeah. The symmetry's all wrong. I mean, technically, this bar here is the center. And this bar here is the center. But... without that extra border of glass between that and the center. Or maybe I'll cut that out and put the glass in at least that far. The problem is, is that I end up with an extra column of glass in here. I'm not moving the walls. I am so not moving the walls. That, that ain't happening. These are the dimensions I got. I'll, I'll figure out some arrangement of... Uh, <laughs> I'll figure out some arrangement of, of glass and sea lanterns and struts and whatnot to, to make it all to make it all work and fit because uh yeah yeah that, that's got to change it doesn't look so bad from up here which is where i built it um th this this side from up here it doesn't look that bad because you can tell where the center is i mean other than the fact that the sea lanterns are right up against the wall on this side but they got a little bit of space on this side um 
where it really does not look all that good is in here. Um, put that in there for now. Because this is where the room logically divides between the lobby and the station. But the division in the roof isn't until up there. I mean, I could pull that back to this side here. And maybe get that double pillar going right here where that lantern is, row of lanterns are. We would push everything else down and still keep the same spacing that way. That's a thought. I don't know. Or maybe I'll just start making artful designs with the prismarine to break it up a little bit more. Get a little more of an intricate pattern going. Hmm. I just got to make sure I got enough light on the glass so the snow doesn't accumulate. Because again, that is my end goal. It is to make sure that uh, the snow does not accumulate on the top of the building and that I have a nice skylight. Maybe I'll go back and do the frozen aquarium too. Who knows? All right. Um, I'll, I'll do the outro here in front of the lovely map with the missing quadrant, which, uh, yeah, I'll add that to my list of things to fix. Uh, this is where I'm actually going to switch... switch things over to the credits and say thank you for joining along this abbreviated stream of Coffee Craft. I apologize for running uh, a little short and a little distracted, uh, still fighting that sinus infection. I did... Normally I do this Tuesdays at 6 p.m. U.S. Eastern on Tuesdays. I already said that, didn't I? Tuesdays at 6 p.m. U.S. Eastern. And um, I normally go about two hours, and it's going to be a little short today. On Thursdays, I do another stream called Games Revisited, where we're going through Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. And uh, I canceled last week's because the sinus infection was getting to me. I will try to do at least a short one this week. Um, knowing what's up, I might be able to get the next step done in an hour-ish. If I'm able to, then that will probably be all I do. If I can, if I'm up to a little bit more, I'll try to do a little bit more. Because again, that's not for a couple more days. So you know, who knows what tomorrow will bring. Um, if you are watching on Twitch or Mixer, make sure that you follow so you get notified um, when I go live. I keep the archives on Twitch and Mixer for as long as those services will allow me to. And I upload all my archives to YouTube, and there is a link down in the description below. If you're watching this after the fact on YouTube, make sure that you subscribe to the channel so you get notified of, uh, of when new, new archives are uploaded. And once I get the episodic content done, you'll get notified when the episodes are up. I got a couple other things that I'd really like to start adding as soon as I can figure out how to, uh, how to fit it in my schedule. That's been the, uh, that's been the real crunch is trying to figure out how to fit everything in my schedule. But uh, look for those sorts of things coming up. And if you want to watch live, there is a link to Twitch and Mixer down in the description below. And uh, any comments, feedback, suggestions, quips, quotes, quandaries, concerns, and other whatnot, you can leave those in the comments. I do actually read them. Uh, <laughs> and uh, with all that... Have fun. Good night.